Good morning. I got a song here that I'm overdubbing on, and uh, I've got a couple of basic rhythm tracks. This is kind of power pop. It's cool. It goes halftime in the choruses and the, the big sections, um, basically all the sections where we're in full and, and playing hard, it's halftime. That's kind of awesome. So um, there was a, a cool counterpoint thing in the intro on the scratch electrics and they sound like they're fake electrics like whoever is producing has created some parts that he wants to use and there were some big diamonds in the choruses i've kind of got that stuff down and i just want to focus on getting this counterpoint thing in the intro and kind of building my other passes that are not the the heavy parts i've already laid from there so let's see Let's just see. We're in the key of uh, C sharp, so I'm naturally down a half step. Playing like I'm in D. Okay, so that's just amp gain. I don't have any pedals, any boosts, or anything on. And I'm running delay and reverb into the front of the amp. I get a lot of questions like, how do you even do that? I think the amp needs to be cleaner than you think. And your mix levels on any sort of delay or reverb need to be a little quieter than you think, right? If you have an amp dimed, it's going to be compressing your sound so much that your delay is really going to poke out. So I'm running through the Analog Outfitter Sarge. Um, back there on the shelf, my new amp rack. Thanks for the kind words. Some people said they thought it was cool. I think it's really cool. You know, it looks like it sounds great, right? <laughs> That's what I like to say. Yeah, it looks like it sounds great. A Little bit of Maris Mercury 7, a little bit of Timeline, eighth note delay. That just sounds awesome. It sounds great, you know? And, and generally, engineers trust the sounds I dial up and they are cool with it. If, if somebody asks me to give them dry tracks, I will do it, for sure, you know? But um, I'm kind of like self-mixing and printing my sound. My sound and what people want from me isn't just the guitar playing, usually, you know. Some people do want total control over any slapback, reverb, delay parts, even tremolo they'll do in post, you know. And if that's communicated beforehand, fantastic, you know. Otherwise, I'm just going to do my thing. And my thing happens to be running a pedal board into the front end of a slightly dirty amp. And um, that works for me because I keep effects levels subtle, you know, I keep the amp gain sort of down. So let's, uh, let's try this intro out. I'm going to stack two parts here and see how they work together. So here we go. Very cool. So here comes the other part. See if these work well together. I think I need to get rid of the slide into the last note because I'm sliding up. The idea is to have two parts that are going... Have that nice major seven interval. I love that in these kinds of songs. I love that rub. Do you hear the? That's awesome. You know, people used to hate that stuff, but uh, man, close intervals. I'm a big fan. I'm a big Bill Frizzell fan. Okay, so if you want to know where I get a lot of my melodic sensibilities, um, go study the crap out of his records. He is a genius and a um, absolute master of melody and just the way that he approaches traditional songs. And man, uh, the records that I really like are Good Dog, Happy Man, Blues Dream. Um, the first Floritone record I was really into. <sighs> Bill Frizzell with Dave Holland and Elvin Jones. I mean, just some of the coolest, weirdest, most beautiful, interesting sounds and melodies. Like his version of Shenandoah on the East-West record 
will melt your brain. I'm not kidding. It's like 12 minutes long, and it's him with a looper pedal. And, uh, man, oh, I forget who he plays with on that. He usually does trio settings. It's usually bass and drums, but some of the stuff is like um, B3 and drums. He'll do an organ trio thing. Thing. Uh, I want to say he did an organ trio thing with Sam Yahel and Brian Blade. I don't know if I'm right about that. Some bootleg I found online. Equally mind-blowing. Just a huge fan. Huge fan. And so, uh, how did I get on that? Oh yeah, this... You know, <laughs> those kinds of intervals. Um, he's the man, you know? And that's, that's kind of where I get that sensibility. Like, the creating those cool rubs and spots. So let's re-attack this intro. And... I won't slide up into the one note on the one track and down into the other. We'll just play them straight and simple, you know, more like chimes, like like a vibraphone just, just hitting without any sort of slur into the notes. All right, so Command Z, both of those tracks. Let's go back to our first one. So it's only one time through and then the vocal comes in on the verse and I've got the vocal in my brain and I have the track way down because again, I don't want to give people songs away. I just want to show you all how I think and what I do, things I like. Why do I make the choices I do? Because I think they're cool. I just like the way it sounds. I'm trying to convey the excitement that I had when I got into music and the discovery of, of sounds that I like you know, and it's not everybody's cup of tea. You know, I'm sure there's people out there who are like, oh, why would you call him? He's weird. He doesn't do things normally. Or I, I, don't, I don't know. People have different tastes. There is a uh, wide menu of guitar players in Nashville. So I'm not going to be right for everybody. But I'm on enough people's lists that I've uh, cobbled together a career while still being a husband and father. So I'm thrilled. Okay, here we go. I had an extra cup of coffee this morning. <laughs> Second track. Very cool. Um, so there's a turnaround after chorus one. I'm gonna kind of skip around in the track and just get everywhere that I wanna play this sound out of the way. And this turnaround is down. And then um, the outro is up, but it's the same form. So I'm going to play it slightly different since the band is all the way up in the outro. But let's hit the turn first. Back to my first track. Let's hear those just soloed by themselves. So I'll, I'll pan a little bit and, you know, here we go. That's awesome. We're in thirds, thirds, seven. <laughs> I love it. Okay, uh, we have another down section, but that's a bridge and there's a big meaningful lyric. Let's catch just the outro. And I want to play this. I, I might just play it in downstrokey eighths. You notice how the last diamond, it sucks all the way back out to like just the acoustic in the pad and there's a little bit of lyric there. So I don't want to hit a big zhlang, you know, zhlang. You've heard that word on this channel before. That's what I call, uh, they're on picks all over the place. That's what I call these kinds of reiki. 
I'm going to figure out how that word's spelled, zhlang, and uh, maybe it'll be a t-shirt on the channel at some point. <laughs> uh, okay. There's, there's zhlang, and there's flume. And normally I don't do that with effects. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We shall see. The other thing that I like about this part is that the one guitar is lower, and then it jumps to the high voice. The other guitar is higher, and then it jumps to the low voice. Yeah, they kind of they kind of cross paths. Awesome. And yeah, it's just a counterpoint thing, right? It's very, I don't know, some of the things that Bach wrote for guitar, you know, just two note things that move in different directions that, that outline a harmonic structure while having a melody all by itself. It's super cool. Um, so yeah, Bach and Bill Frizzell, man, you know, all right. Let's move to some new parts, and I'm going to switch guitars. There was a cool part in the um, Scratch Electrics that I really like because it, it helps frame the vocal in the chorus. And so I'm just going to put that on its own track, uh, just playing choruses. And it'll probably play through the solo as well, but um, chorus. Super cool. All right, next chorus through the solo. Awesome. How about the uh, last chorus out? rock and roll. Let's do a solo and then my last track will be like just top down swells and vibe and and stuff and things. I'll leave the delay on, but I think I'm going to turn off the uh the reverb. Okay. Uh, it's a four bar solo, um, probably not going to try to fit as many notes as I can into it, but play something that's more driving and, and maybe a little more melodic. 
I don't know. Let's see what happens. Pedal steel on here already. Did you hear that? One more on the solo. Just listen to it. That's super cool. I hear that sort of, uh, just kind of spilling into this big reverb, you know, as everything sort of washes out into that down and out into that bridge. So one more guitar track. It's funny. I um, I play the Novo quite a bit. I play my uh, Jazzmaster quite a bit. <laughs> every time, I, every time I play the Novo first, I'm trying to find the Jazzmaster toggle switch up here. When it's down here, maybe this guitar plays plays a high version of what my two counterpoint guitars are doing. At least maybe the top voice. Let's see. I think that could be cool. Wow, I went for the exact same thing that the steel player did there. Let's, let's get in there though, because I want to print silence over that spot and let him have that spot. I gotta figure out how to make that work with the uh, the other hook guitar that's already there. And maybe it's just a big... Let's see, let's see if that's the ticket. Top of the chorus.
like all that, but uh, I want to get back to my chorus sound, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna cheat a little bit and punch in back on the bridge pickup with the reverb that I had. Common tactic, good luck guy live, live guy who has to play this. <laughs> I don't know. If I were playing this live, I would I would uh, stay on the bridge pickup for verse two and just try to make as seamless a thing as possible. That's the difference between playing sessions and playing live. Live, you're taking a bunch of different parts and trying to make a cohesive part that catches the most important things top to bottom in the whole song. And that's probably the intro hook, maybe a little bit of vibe in verse one, energy in the chorus, whether that's low chords or a driving part, the solo, the most important part in every section. You've kind of got to weave a single part that makes all that work, if you're the only guitar player, you know? So here, it's backwards. I have two tracks that are just big rhythm guitars that play all the choruses and the big sections. I have two more tracks that play the intro counterpoint. I have a solo on a separate track. And now I have a final track that's all swells and vibe that, that plays some important interactive things throughout. So I think that's one of the hardest things about making the transition between live playing and studio playing. You are just working in the opposite direction. You're, you're spreading things out over different parts and different tones. Like my power guitars are 335s, you know. The counterpoint is the Novo. Um, the solo was the 335. Uh, this is the Jazzmaster. Like it, you just have a lot wider variety of sounds and tracks that you're offering. Even though if, if, if this band's on the road and they've got one electric guy, like he's, he's gonna have to weave a part that catches all that stuff. Depending on if they're running tracks, maybe they're running rhythm guitars in the background, you know, on, a, on an Ableton rig or something. Every situation's a little bit unique, you know? So here we go, second chorus. And then again, I'm not going to strike the final diamond after everybody's out. I want that to just be uh, acoustic and the um, pad. And if I hit something slightly earlier and it hangs over, kind of spills over into that, the reverb, that's fine, uh, I think. So, man, I think I'm done. Uh, send them off. See what they say. Thanks for watching. See you later.